I have um, just a brief word I want to share with you this morning. We've been in Matthew chapter 13 for quite some time. Um, we'll be here a little bit longer. There's a few more parables. I think it's a couple more that I want to share with you. This one today is um, extremely simple, uh, simple in that it communicates a main thought that might have two parts to it. But I just want to take a moment to kind of dig into it. So I want to invite you to keep your Bibles open as we kind of walk through what's in front of us. Now, by way of illustration to kind of set framework for um, what we're going to be talking about this morning, I am a L.A. Lakers fan. I don't know if we have any L.A. Lakers fan in the house. No? Sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are probably all cheering for Golden State. Boo. Yeah, no, yeah, see, yeah, uh, yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, trenders. Yeah. <laughs> But, but what, what I like about the Lakers is um, February 22nd, I am living for February 22nd, just like um, most NBA owners. I mean, July, no, June, 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 June 22nd, I'm sorry. February is my birthday. Yeah, and that's, yeah. So, so I'm living for that because that's when the NBA draft comes, right? And here's what happens during the NBA draft. Teams that are on the bottom, they kind of get... You know, depending on how that number system fall, they get to get a good pick. The Lakers, um, they get the second pick in the overall draft, draft. And what's exciting about that is that they get to take all their eggs or all their money and go out and scope what's out there and try to find the best players they can that will help them to revive or to get back to where they need to go. And there's a couple players that they're looking at. This guy named Lonzo Ball is one of them from UCLA. You can tell I'm into it, huh? You know? <laughs> yeah. But, but the, point, the point of all of that is, that, um, is that, that, that they're hoping to find, and listen to the word I'm going to use, a treasure. Or they're hoping to find a pearl that they can invest just about everything they have because for the Lakers, their goal is to get back to the top where they've always been in the days of magic and all those guys. And so they're releasing their front office to go and scope. And they're in search, if you will, for a price possession that they feel will be worth so much that it could turn that particular team around. The same is true for NFL. Every year the NFL does the same thing. And I am reminded of uh, 1983, I think it was when um, the Baltimore Colts in the first round draft selected John Elway, right? And they put some money there. John, however, did not like being with the Colts because the Colts was not on the top of their game, and he wanted to either go play baseball or go do something else. So a trade happened. He ended up in Denver, and Denver, you guys know, come on, y'all know the story. The rest is history, right? But the point, the point is this. When, when the trade was made, Denver invested a lot of money because of how John performed when he was at Stanford and how he did um, when he was playing his collegiate years and all that good stuff. And as time progressed, his, his value increased, and the increase in his value didn't even shake the um, front office of the Broncos. They spent whatever they needed to because they understood the value of what they had in an Elway. You with me? Now, now, here's what they found out. It paid off for them because the guy made history, and I don't even like him. You know, um, <laughs> you know uh, it's not like Tony Romo or, or you know, so you kind of get the deal. I'm a Dallas guy. Anyway, don't mess up my illustration. Yeah. <laughs> It's paining me to have to talk about Elway. But, uh, but, but he did well for the team and made history, won a couple of Super Bowls, did, did his great thing and all that good stuff. It went well. Now, I'm saying that to say this. I'm saying that to say this. If we understand the value of what we have in the kingdom of God, I am saying like those pro teams, we would spare and let me use a financial term, no expense as it relates to obtaining the kingdom of God. We would spare no, no thought, no anything as it relates to obtaining the kingdom of God. But, but my problem, and I'll venture to say your problem as well, is we don't understand how valuable the kingdom of God is, or maybe we haven't positioned ourselves where we can see how we can reap the benefits of the kingdom, and we don't know what it's really worth. We don't know what it's really worth. 
So we don't go all out to expend or give up everything we have to reap the benefits of being heirs or inheritors of the kingdom of God. So Jesus now finds himself in the book of Matthew in a place where transition had just happened from the Old Testament where the Israelites were the reigning nation to where it's no longer about the nation of Israel, but it's about the people of God, inclusive of everyone on the face of the earth, being a part of the kingdom of God. So he spends some time teaching these parables in Matthew chapter 13, talking about the kingdom of God is like this and the kingdom of God is like that, so people could understand what the kingdom of God is all about. He finds himself in verses 44 through 46 now, explaining to his subjects or to his hearers the value of the kingdom of God and what it's worth. And if we can ever understand what the kingdom is, we too would give up everything to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, here's what I want you to hear before I even read the text and talk about it a little bit. The kingdom of God is the rule of God in the earth realm. Now, I need you to repeat after me. Say, the kingdom of God is the rule of God in the earth. Come on, there's more than two people in here. Let me hear you say it. Yeah. The kingdom of God. I know you're sitting next to a person. I don't want him to hear me talk in church. Yeah, talk. Come on. Say, the kingdom of God is the rule of God in the earth. One more time. The kingdom of God is the rule of God in the earth. Now, let me change the words a little bit. Say, the kingdom of God is the reign of God in my life. Say it again one more time. Say, the kingdom of God is the reign of God in my life. Now, the reason I want you to get that, if you don't get nothing else from the message, if you understand this, you'll, you'll kind of lock into this, is that when me as an individual, and I as an individual, completely surrender my total life over to God. Oh, come on, I need somebody to say amen. When, when I surrender where God has full control and He's, he's rulership and he's reigning as Lord of my life and he's master over me. I am talking about the value, the benefit, how that, I mean, proves so fruitful that I would get to the place where I would spare no expense but to surrender everything completely to God. But you see, we don't know what that's like because we haven't really experienced it yet. So we, we give God a piece of us. We don't give him all of us. Does that make sense? So if that be the case, we are never really positioned where we experience the full reign of God in the earth realm. So Jesus cites these parables and he's talking to his hearers and his listeners so they too can now know what the kingdom of God is all about. So open your Bibles and let's read. I want to kind of talk through this and I won't be before you long. Go to Matthew 13. Let me read the two simple parables again and then we're just going to walk through it and talk through it and hopefully it'll make some sense to us so we can get to where God would have us to be. If you're in verse 44, say amen. Let me know if you're there. Amen. I hear some people come. I want to make sure everybody's there because I want us to read this together so we can walk through it. Come on, say amen if you're there. Amen. Notice how it begins. The kingdom of heaven, it says, is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Verse 45 says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. So I want to start here. The text opens up by saying in verse 44 that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that's hidden in the field. Say, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. Come on, say that. Now, here's what you need to know about the stakes. Um, in, back in the days of Israel, Israel was probably, or no doubt, a nation that was always plagued by being in war against another nation. If you study the, the history of Old Testament Israel, they were always subject to either the Amorites or the Perizzites or some nation was always battling against them. And so what they would do, historian has says, from time to time, 
when an invading nation would come to invade the nation of Israel, people would probably go out on their property or go out into the open field, and to prevent their treasures from being taken, they would dig holes in the ground and they would no doubt hide their treasures such that when the invaders invaded their camp, they would go into their tents and the treasures, those things that they held most valuable would be hidden and they wouldn't find it. And so they would only take certain things, but that treasure could be preserved such that when the invading nation left, they could go recover their treasures that were hidden. In similar fashion, you all know this, in, in, in early Palestine, they did not have banks like we have banks today. They didn't have safety deposit box like we have safety deposit box today. They didn't have, you know, the secure systems that, that people have. So what people would do is if they were landowners, they would go into their land just like they would do with the invading nations, bury holes and, and hide, hide their treasures so that at some future time they can go recover the thing and, and have it in their possession. Jesus now, knowing this history and knowing this nature and knowing the culture to which he was speaking, uses a simile to say the kingdom of heaven is very similar to a rich landowner who had a treasure hidden in his field. He hires an employee to work the field. The employee goes out, and while he is working the field, he ends up digging to a place where he finds a treasure. Come on, does this make sense? Now, now, lest, lest I hurry on, let me stop for a moment and deal with the fact that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that was hidden. I need you to hear me say this, because if you remember when Jesus was on the face of the earth, there would be times when he would perform a miracle and he would heal somebody. And here's what he would say to them. Don't tell anyone what had just happened. Come on, y'all know this. Because here's the thing that everyone on the face of the earth, even though they were there, the kingdom existed, but they could not see the kingdom because it was what? Hidden from them, okay? And let me say this before I even move on. Even to the world today, the kingdom is now, but people in the world cannot see the kingdom because they're not a part of it. And, and, and he wants his disciples and the hearers to understand that even though the kingdom is here, just like people who would hide treasures in the backyard, it's hidden, but it's present. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. It, it's hidden, but, but it's still present. So here's what would happen now. So the treasure, this man is working in the field. He discovers the treasure, but then he covers it up again, and he hides it, and I like this, in the same field. He discovers it, but he hides it where? In the same field. I like that because here's what I want y'all to hear about this, and we're going to talk about this as we get to the back end of, of the message. Scripture says, in certain instances, don't cast your pearl before swines. Does anybody in here know that the world can't handle you necessarily at the time? Oh, I need, I need, I need, I need two folks to say, I'm walking with you, preacher. Come on. Y'all got to hear me. Because, and, and Jesus would do the same thing. He would heal people and he would bring them out. But he'd say, he'd cover them back up and say, don't go tell everyone because the timing is not yet. But what I like the fact is that he hides them back in the same field. And then when the timing is right, he gets the money. And he doesn't just come after the treasure. He goes after the whole field. I wish I had. I wish I had. I wish I, wish I had somebody. Look at what it says. The, the discover now. He invests his entire portfolio to purchase the field to secure legal ownership. Are you hearing me? Legal ownership of the treasure that exists in the field. Okay? And what I like about that is that if you understand anything about how God works in his kingdom, is he will find a treasure. Then he will bury that treasure back in the field. Then what I like about God is he buys the whole field because the possibility exists that in the field there's more than one. Yeah, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Here's how the way Scripture puts this in John. For God so loves what? 
Come on, talk to me. He so loves what? That he does what? He sold his whole portfolio. Oh, I need somebody here this morning. He, he, he went and he couldn't find enough money on earth. He couldn't find a person holy enough. He couldn't find a person righteous enough. So he took his whole portfolio. He divested his own self. Come on, I, I need somebody to walk with me. And he took his own self and he bought the whole field, not just for one treasure. We, we got to get this. We must understand this. We must understand it because, don't, and, and he did this for legal ownership of the what? Come on, for legal ownership because here's what happened. If, if, if the treasure was extracted prematurely and the man didn't own the field, the owner of the field could say, that's mine. I wish I had somebody in here. But, but if ownership had been transferred, I wish I had somebody here. If ownership had been changed and I found something in what belongs to me right now, guess who it belongs to? In case you missed where I'm going, before Christ came into the earth, Scripture says that Satan was the prince of the earth. Oh, come on, are you with me? And so before God extracted what was his prematurely, he hung on that cruel cross. He went into the depths of the grave. He arose on the third day morning, and he bought the whole field. I wish I had somebody in here. And so the enemy doesn't own the treasures that exist in the field anymore. It all belongs to God. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? When God buys you, he, he didn't just take you out of the ground. He owns it all. And we all belong to him. He buys the whole field. He buys the whole field. He invests everything. This speaks to the value of the kingdom. Come on, say the value of the kingdom. Say it again. Say the value of the kingdom. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me do a parenthetic here because a lot of folk have asked me, so preacher, um, Pastor Felix, you know, you, you're called. Um, the Spirit will give you utterance. The Spirit will reveal things to you. Why do you need to go to school? Why do you need to get your master's in divinity? Why do you need to get your doctorate in ministry, so on and so forth? And here's what I say to them. I found a treasure. And, and, and for me, this treasure is so valuable that I can't just give a piece of me to get it. Are you hearing me this morning? I can't just give half of me to get it. I've got to give, yeah, because it is so valuable. And I want to encourage someone here today because I try to say this to my son. Um, I said, because Eddie, I say this to Eddie all the time, because I know who I am in Christ, I am willing to sacrifice all of me to be all that God would have me to be. And here's what I want to say to those of you who might be struggling with a ministry call or a career or whatever it is God has for you. The moment you find out who you are in Christ, I want you to hear me say it is so valuable that you ought to get to the place where you invest everything you have to be all that God would have you to be. Do not stop short of your potential. Come on, say amen if you're hearing me. Don't stop short. Press on towards the end. If you know who God called you to be, maybe it's a business owner. Maybe it's, it's something in ministry. Maybe it's something in the career field. But the moment you land, the value of that thing. Are you hearing me this morning? Don't stop short, but press on toward the goal. Come on, say he bought the field. Come on, say it again. Say he bought the field. Look at this. Here's the next thing. He says that, so he switched gears. In similar fashion, he says the kingdom of God is like a merchant searching for pearls. A merchant searching for pearls. Now, here's what you need to know. Once again, in the days of Israel, when these rich, wealthy individuals, what they would do is they would go around from tribe to tribe, nation to nation, location to location, if they had the resources, to try to find the most valuable pearl they can find. And, and historian says that the Persian Gulf, um, the Indian Sea are places where some of the most valuable pearls existed. And these pearls, when discovered, could worth, be worth anywhere in the neighborhood of millions of dollars because they were so valuable. So he says now, 
you had a poor guy working in a field that found a treasure. Then you've got a rich guy that's looking for something that's valuable. Are you with me? Come on. Come on, say amen if you're there. Okay. Now, now notice, notice how this transitions. It says, the merchant discovers or he finds this extremely valuable pearl. Repeat after me. Say he was looking for it. Say it again. Say he was looking for it. Now, that word looking um, in the Greek, what's nuanced in, in the participle is that, is, is what's called an adverbial participle. And what that means, what that means is that this guy didn't just look over here and stop. He kept looking. All right. I think I just heard um, Anthony just said he's been looking for five years, right? So, so he didn't just go to Southwestern Baptist Church around the way and, and stop looking. He kept looking, and he kept looking, and he kept looking. And what's also nuanced in the verb is that it's the present tense looking, meaning that he wakes up every day and he keeps looking until he finds. He keeps looking until he finds. And let me, let me just as a parenthetic, a lot of us give up too quick in the looking. Oh, come on. I need, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you haven't found it yet, just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, just keep looking. Come on. Tell them, come on, say, 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 just keep looking. Just keep looking. You're going to find it. So, but then he looks, and then he discovers, and he finds this extremely valuable pearl. Commentator says, probably worth millions and millions and millions of dollars, right? He finds this pearl, and so notice what he does. He liquidates his entire portfolio to purchase this, this pearl because of the value of the thing. Okay? Because of the value of the thing, he liquidates his entire portfolio. I shared this illustration with the church this morning. I have a problem. I have one little, um, one sin. I don't sin much. I just have one. Um, I'm just kidding. Yeah, don't, don't believe me for a second. I like BMWs. And because I like BMWs, um, I have this hobby where I, um, I like to buy them. And um, <laughs> um, I, I like them. And so what I do is I collect these classic BMWs, right? So what I'll do is I will get on the Internet and I will search and search and search until I find the exact thing that I'm looking for because I'm looking for a pearl. You kind of get what I'm saying? I love these beamers. Um, and the reason I search for them is because I know the value of a good classic one, right? And, and the, problem, the problem with my hobby and being married, especially to Katani, is that um, it creates a little bit of a problem, right? She doesn't share what I call value, value, you know? So what I do is when I find a pearl, I can't just go get it. I got to wait till she leaves town, right? So, so I got to sin. I got to sin. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Let's pray for your pastor, right? And so one, I never forget this. One time, Katani's mom was sick. When her mom was sick, um, I was searching the Internet, and I found this 1988 um, BMW 535i. I mean, it's like original, the deal, the deal, the deal. Um, and things are worth money. So aren't you going to go visit your mom? She goes and visits her mom. I said, Eddie, let's take a trip, right? Where are we going, Dad? Don't worry about it. We get in the car, drive up to Fort Lockton. I look at this pearl. This joker was shiny. Oh, my gosh, Father, forgive me. I mean, <laughs> the thing was, so, so I bought it, and I drove it home, put it in the far corner of the garage, covered it up with the car cover, and I'm going about my business because I got my pearl. That thing sat there for months. Um, one day she came home and the wind was blowing. And <laughs> opened up the garage, and the wind had lifted up the front cover of my pearl, and she just stood in the garage, you know how sisters do. Mm. And she gets on the phone and calls me, what's this red thing under the car cover? You know? <laughs> and needless to say, you kind of get, you got to get the story how, how ugly that can get. But, but, but the point of this is, is, is when I find something that I believe is valuable, I'm not saying I invest my entire life, but because I know the value of the thing, right? 
And here's what she'll say to me. Why you got to have all them junky cars all over the yard? I said, those aren't junk. Those are pearls. When I die, just sell one and see how much it's worth. You know? <laughs> but she don't go for it. She don't go for it. But, but back to the point of the parable. <laughs> the, the, the point of the parable is that this man found this thing that was so valuable that he spent everything he had to purchase it. Does that make sense? Come on, say the value of the kingdom. Now, now let me go here. Let me, let me connect the dots for you because I want to compare these, these, these two parables and see if we can get out of here. Number one, with the hidden treasure, the discoverer accidentally happened up on the treasure, but he recognized his, the value of it. Listen to how I'm saying. He accidentally bumped into it, but he recognized the value. Okay? He wasn't looking. He was happy-go-lucky doing what he was doing. And then by accident, he bumped up into this thing, and he recognized the value of it. The reason I like that point is because the majority of us in here, when we encountered God and the kingdom of God, we wasn't looking for it. Come on, talk to me this morning. We accidentally bumped up into it. Oh, don't act like that wasn't you. You was about going about doing your business, hanging out with Bubba and them and, and Shaquin and all of them and doing your stuff. Come on now, getting high, getting drunk, sleeping around. Don't act like that wasn't you, doing your stuff. Then all of a sudden, sickness stepped in. And in the midst of that sickness, you cried out, oh God, you accidentally bumped up into him. Come on, your marriage, your husband or wife, all of a sudden decided to leave and you didn't know what to do next. And all all of a sudden, you accidentally bumped up into the treasure. Come on. Your health was fine. Then one day the doctor said, you've got cancer. You won't live long. You accidentally bumped up into it. Come on. You got fired from the job that was going well, and it looked good. But all of a sudden, you accidentally bumped up into it. You wasn't looking for it, and you accidentally bumped up into it. But oh, when you hit it, you realize the value. The value. The value. Maybe that's not your testimony, but that's my testimony. I wasn't looking for God when I found him. Come on now. I was doing my own stuff. And then all of a sudden, I bumped into him accidentally. But oh my gosh, when I found the value, I sold everything. Oh, y'all not hearing me. Everything, everything, everything to get it. Look at the second one. With the pearl, however, the merchant didn't accidentally bump into it. He was looking for it with intention because he understood the value of what he was looking for. Let me help you all with that one. Let me help you all with that one. You ever seen folk that they're living life and they know what they're doing is just not it? It's got to be something. Here's the word I'm going to use, more. <laughs> Come on now. This, this, this job, there's got to be more. Come on, are you with me? This life I'm living, there's got to be more. I need to find something different. You ever heard people say there's time for a change? Uh, come on now, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I need to find something else? Come on, that's the guy with the pearl. That's a whole lot of us. Some folk were looking for something better, looking for a different life, looking for a different motive, looking for a different something, and then all of a sudden, you bump into the gospel, you bump into God, you bump into the kingdom of God, and you realize the value of it, the value of it. Then when you find the value, here's what we do. Sell everything, everything to get a hold of this thing. What I like about number three, in both cases, it says, what was found the cost was investing their entire portfolio. Come on, say, turn your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to give up everything. Tell the other neighbor. Say, other neighbor, you got to give up everything. I, I got to, I need to make sure this sinks in. I need this to make this thing sink. Because some of us have found it, but we haven't bought it yet because we want to hang on to some. Y'all missed that. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Some of us have found it, 
but we haven't completely bought it yet, and we're on, on an installment payment plan, and you can't get this on installments. I wish I had somebody in here. You got to sacrifice everything if you're going to get it. Notice when the man found the land, he did the, the pressure, he didn't go to the landowner and said, can I make payments? Because the owner would say, payments on what? Then he said, I found a treasure, and the owner would say, it belonged to me. Come on. Notice when he found the pearl, he did, the merchant didn't say to the other merchant, let me make payments. The problem with you and the problem with me, we live in a world where we buy now and pay later, and we want to worship God the same way. We want to buy now and we want to pay later. I wish I had somebody in here. So here's what we want to do. We want to get him now and we want to keep living life the way we live life. We want to buy now and pay later. But you can't be in the kingdom like that, baby. You've got to give it all up. Are you hearing me? Here's what this look like. God, I need you to take Bubba away from me, but I'm going to keep his number. It don't work like that. Come on, come on. You got to give Bubba and him and the number up if you want to get the kingdom. Come on. You've got to give Shaniqua and her Facebook address up. You got to give everything up if you want the kingdom. If you want the kingdom. This is not an installment payment plan. You've got to give everything up because of the value. The value, the value, the value, the value. And we cannot experience the joy of the kingdom because we owe too much. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. And, and listen to this. We're burdened with the depth of life, the debt of life, because we haven't given it all to God. And we can't enjoy the kingdom. I like that about this. this thing. Look at the fourth one. And, and this is what I like about this because when you give it all up and you buy the pearl or the treasure of importance to the parable, though not explicitly stated. In both cases, it says the man and the merchant, they took possession immediately of the treasure. It's like they bought it, and then they got it. He paid for the land, and then he had the land, and all the other treasures in the land that he hadn't dug up yet. Let me tell you what I like about that. A lot of us are living life waiting for the sweet by and by to get to heaven. When I get to heaven, all pain is going to be done. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have joy, 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 joy. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have this. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have that. I want you to hear Jesus saying to his listeners, the kingdom is now and then the kingdom is also not yet. I want you to hear me say this. And, and we need to understand this about the kingdom of God is that by virtue of the fact that I give my life to Christ, I have access to the kingdom right now. I can have joy right now. I can have peace right now. I can have contentment right now. I can be happy right now. I don't have to wait until I get to heaven to reap the benefits of the kingdom that I have right now. You take immediate possession of it even though it's not yet. So here's what this looked like. Your life is in shambles, but you go to work. And you're sitting at your computer smiling. Hey, your employee, what's wrong with you? I got the kingdom, girl. <laughs> I wish I had somebody in here. Right now. Right now, even though it's not yet. So here, here's what I want y'all to take away. Big idea. And I'm almost done. The kingdom of God is so valuable that it is worth sacrificing everything. 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 Everything to gain it. Just like the Lakers are going to do. I hope it's ball. But they're going to give up a lot. Are you with me? And they're going to spare no expense. Right? I think your Broncos are doing the same thing for a quarterback right about now. You kind of get what I'm saying? They're going to spend a lot. They're going to spend a lot because of the value. And it's no different with you and I in our relationship with God. God wants us to give up a lot because of the value. Are you with me? The value. The value of what we get. So I, need, I, I want you all to hear this. So here's a couple of applications, and then we'll be out of here. Number one, the kingdom, of, is of, the kingdom is present, but it's hidden from the masses, right? In the same way, the kingdom can be present and yet not perceive, and I'll explain that, 
because its present form does not overwhelm the world or overcome resistance to it, but the person who does this cover the treasure goes with joy. That kind of says what I was saying to you earlier. Here's what that means. You can have the kingdom in you, and nobody around you can see it because they don't have it. And they don't understand you. In the midst of storm, you go to work that morning, we're all going to get laid off. And everybody's crying, oh, Lord, what is we going to do? And here you are. I got the kingdom. God's got me, baby. I wish I had somebody in here. <laughs> they can't see you. They, they can't see it. But you know the value of what you have. Marriage falling apart. Thing goes and going crazy. But, and, and people don't understand how can you persevere. Bad news from the doctor. They don't understand how you're making it. But because of what you have in the kingdom of God, you can stand in the midst and say, for God I live and for God I die. You can say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Because you know the value of the kingdom that's in you. And the world can't see it. They can't perceive it. But we understand what the value is. Here's the second thing I want you to get by way of application. The kingdom of God is the greatest treasure. Though its worth is immeasurable, you can't measure it by any standard, but it is now present and only veiled in only veiled form and can be possessed by some without knowledge of those near them. I just said that. You can have it and only you see it, Right? But nobody else can see it. Let me, let me do these last two. So like a hidden treasure or pearl that can be held in one's arm, the kingdom is known only to its joyful possessions. Yet those who find and receive the message of the kingdom and who respond in discipleship, I'll explain that. You can have begun the experience and the wonders of the kingdom. Here's what that's saying. If you want the kingdom and you don't know God, that term discipleship implies relationship. Give your heart to God. And watch what will happen. Watch what he'll do. Turn your mourning into dancing. Turn your life around. It's something about having the peace in knowing that even though I'm in the earth, I am not of the earth. Anthony, you just gave me something. New. He says, I, I, you know, I live in heaven. I'm just hanging out on earth. You'll get that. Only kingdom folk can get that. Come on, does that make sense? It's a different framework. It's a different mindset. So here's my admonition. If you're looking for something greater, or even if you're not looking for anything, today you bumped into the kingdom. And God can do something new in your life. Lastly, let me look at this one, last one. So people know the kingdom. It is a reality, and it's worth everything. And they joyfully make it their priority in life by seeking first the kingdom, sacrificing all for it. But at the same time, finding in the kingdom everything that you need. Matthew 6.33 says it this way. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what's going to happen? All things. All things. All things shall be added unto you. My prayer for this ministry, my prayer for us, my prayer as we go forth in this upcoming year, as we become such kingdom subjects that we understand the value of the kingdom and we submit and surrender our God, our hearts to God in such a fashion. Are you hearing me this morning? If you're here and you haven't given it all to God yet, you haven't surrendered it all to the Lord of this world, I want to challenge you this morning. Give it to him. If you're here and you haven't accepted him in your life as personal Lord and Savior, well, my prayer is that you would have encountered the kingdom Give it to him. Give it to him this morning. Stand to your feet with me this morning as the worship team makes their entrance. Stand to your feet. I want to pray. And as our ministers make their way to the front, I want to say this as seriously and as sincerely as I can. If you came today and you don't know God, don't take the risk. Don't leave here the same way you came. If you've been struggling with life, if you've been going through stuff, I'm hoping you heard the good news of the kingdom and you say, I want to trust God like that. So whether it's salvation, whether it's rededication, whether it's prayer, whatever God is saying to you, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. 
If you haven't given your heart to God, if you haven't, haven't been baptized, I want you to come down so we can pray with you. And if you're saying, man, I didn't understand the kingdom like that and I didn't know the value of the kingdom, I want to rededicate my life. Come, we want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. We want to allow God to just have his way as this altar is open this morning. So bow your heads with me. Let's pray. Pastor Karen, come. Holy Spirit, you're a wonderful God. You're an awesome, gracious, and a mighty God. As your word has gone forth this morning, God, we give our hearts to you. We give our time to you. Thank you for you being God. Like the man who found a treasure hidden in the field, like the merchant who found the pearl, we give it all up to you because you're a good, good father. That's who you are, God. You love us in spite of. And so we surrender it all to you. So I thank you for this congregation of believers, God, that come out to worship you. And I'm praying that as the kingdom has been revealed and we're starting to understand it more and more, we would make the investments. Whatever is plaguing us, give it to you. Scripture is clear. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Teach us to sell it all for the kingdom, God, so we can have joy, so we can have peace, so we can enjoy fellowship with you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. If God